Hi everyone, it's Knifefighter22 here. I hope you guys are all well. Uh, and welcome to the next one of my uh, chess games in the series I would like to show you. Um, this game I just played today uh, against uh, this man from the Netherlands. Um, I, this was a game I did lose on time, unfortunately. Uh, but it was a very interesting attack. Um, I blundered my queen, and then two moves later he blundered his queen. Uh, so it was a very sort of even based game, uh, especially because we both uh, lost our queens in a blunder. So we'll take a look. Uh, it starts with the Vienna game, I believe. So knight to c3, and here he goes for knight to c6, a very standard move. Uh, and from here I play the recommendation f4. Uh, I should just mention, I did do a tutorial on the Vienna game uh, a few months ago, so I put a link here for anybody who would like to know how to play the uh, opening effectively. Um, okay, so from here, uh, he plays bishop to b4, just pinning down my knight after I move my d-pawn. Uh, knight to f3. Uh, and he goes for the exchange immediately, maybe he wants to give me doubled up pawns, um, which I do. I take back with my b pawn in this position because I want to go ahead and play pawn to d4, uh, gaining central control. I don't want to take back with my d pawn and have to worry about loads of pawns on the side of the board when they're not doing very much. Uh, so he plays queen over to e7. I think this is just uh, to defend the e5 pawn because obviously it's being attacked two times in a row with the pawn and with the knight. Uh, he could always play d6, and I think after I do play d4, he does play d6 uh, to help defend the pawn. Um, but from here, I, I choose to close the position down, um, just because I think that because I've got such a big space advantage, um, I really think it would be a good idea to make a nice close position. So d5, and you'll notice that because I've got this pawn situated on c3, it blocks off both of the outpost squares for the knight, um, and a5 isn't all that much good for the knight, so he chooses to bring it back to d8. Uh, but now this knight's on a very weak square because it can't come back to c6 and it can't come into e6. Uh, so he didn't make very good use of his knight. Uh, I now play pawn up to c4, uh, so just attacking in the center. Uh, hopefully, maybe playing c5 in the future after bishop to e3 and trading off my double up pawns. Uh, bishop to d7, uh, just a developing move. Maybe he might castle queenside. Um, and now rook to b1. Um, this is basically because I saw bishop d7, and I'm thinking, is he going to try and get this knight out and castle over here? Uh, so what I did was I put pressure uh, on the weak point of b7. Obviously, it is defended by the knight, um, but you could say the knight is a bit stuck because it is the only defender of the pawn. Uh, and he plays pawn to c6 just to um, undermine my center. I don't worry about this, though. I just continue with bishop to d3. I want to be castling on the king's side, as it is not possible for me to castle over here. Uh, just because I've already moved my rook, so I must castle on the king's side. Um, and now he plays pawn off to f6. I uh, found this a bit strange. I think maybe he's trying to defend the e5 point. Also, he might be able to get his knight into f7 uh, and back into the game a little bit. Um, and from here, I continue my plan by castling. Uh, and now he chooses to uh, make the trade on f4. So I go ahead and take that, and uh, my bishop is developed, all I have to do is move my queen, and I've completed my development. Um, and he plays uh, bishop down, sorry, he plays pawn down to g5 now, um, forcing my bishop back to g3. I did actually, let's just go back and move, I did actually think for about a minute and a half um, on this move, which is probably why I ended up losing on time in the end, but I was calculating a line like, something ridiculous like, bishop takes, pawn takes, Hang on, I know what it was. Knight takes here, and then after pawn takes, queen h4 check, but then he can play queen f7, uh, and then after I trade off, then I have to move my bishop, and I'm down a piece. I could take the pawn on d6, which is two pawns in competition for the piece, as his queen will be on f7, um, but I didn't really find any checkmate lines um, that it was worth. Maybe if my pawn was on e5 and I could get this bishop in, it might have been something to do, but I choose to not sacrifice the knight here, and I bring my bishop back to g3. And now he closes the position even further with pawn to c5, and this is a good idea for him because uh, he's already lost his dark square bishop, so he doesn't need to worry about any dark square weaknesses, and then his light square bishop can operate down these really nice diagonals that he's created. I now play rook to e1, uh, just aligning over with the queen and the king, maybe some pins going on there if I can make that happen. Um, and yeah, he does play his knight round to f7, so this is what I thought, he's getting into better squares, possibly the e5 square, maybe h6 and down to g4 attacking my king, um, but I can now go ahead and take the b7 pawn, just a slight mistake on his behalf, uh, but it doesn't really matter I suppose. 
And he plays his queen back to d8. <clears throat> I'm not really sure exactly why he does this. Maybe to get out on the queen side or to defend over here. Um, and now knight's back to d2. I thought again for a long time on this on this move. Uh, but my knight on f3 wasn't really doing anything. Um, and also I notice a weakness which is this um, h5 diagonal towards his king. Um, and if this knight moves there will be some very nasty checks. So what I wanted to do... Was I wanted to get my queen out and then maybe even move my knight back to f3. Um, and he plays rook b8 now. Uh, I'm fine with the rooks being traded, so I just go ahead with that. Um, and then I can bring my queen into h5. Now what I'm really thinking is I want to get my light square bishop working in coordination um, with my queen because I'm attacking the light squares. So I really want to sort of play e5 soon and really sort of hammer this down. Um, he plays his queen across to c8. I wasn't really sure at the time why he did this, but you'll see in a minute. Uh, and now I make the massive blunder, uh, knight f3. And you'll notice he has this amazing move. Oh, he traps my queen with bishop to g4. And this is the whole reason why he moved his queen back over to c8. Because if you'll notice, uh, there's no possible squares that uh, my queen can go to. So I'm thinking, yeah, I don't really know what to do. Maybe I can try and promote one of these pawns. So I play pawn up to e5. Uh, and he goes ahead and takes my queen. Um, and then you'll notice that there's a discover check here. So I can go ahead and take the pawn on d6 with check. And you'll notice it gets quite close to promotion. And he actually fell for a trap here. He loses his queen um, because basically what he wants to do is he wants to capture this pawn as quickly as possible. But he can't capture it with a knight because it's check. So he plays his, queen, uh, his king up to d7 now to attack the d6 pawn. It is still defended by the bishop, um, but now after the king's moved, you can play knight takes, and then bishop takes, and king takes, and he wins a pawn. Um, but he didn't see that there's a skewer here, the tactic called the skewer. I might make a tactics video uh, using the skewer soon, which is basically bishop to f5 check. And you'll notice that uh, the king has to move, and after the king moves, it uncovers the queen to be taken by the bishop. Uh, and then after king takes c8, things aren't looking too bad for me. Um, so what do I have in compensation? I guess I've got a couple of pawns, um, but obviously I didn't manage to get this bishop back, so I am down one minor piece currently. Uh, I can now go in with rook e8 check, though. I suppose I do have some counterplay. Um, so he plays king to d7, I now go back to e7 check. I'm trying to find a way to really try and promote these pawns um, and win the game quickly. King to d8, and then I can go ahead and win the a7 pawn. And from here he plays bishop takes f3, and g takes f3, and then he goes ahead with h5. What he didn't see was this move though, is after this bishop moved, uh, this was the only defender of his knight on f7. So after he trades that off, then I can go ahead and win his knight. And then he goes ahead and traps my own bishop. Um, I did find a way out of this immediately, I think. I played rook to f8 check, uh, king to d7, rook to f7 check, and then after the king went back to e8, um, I play d7 check, um, and after the king goes across to d8, I can then play bishop to d6. So uh, this pawn moved, so I have a free square for the bishop. And then he plays knight to h6. This was quite an interesting point in the game, because I'm thinking he's attacking my rook, but there's not really any efficient squares I can go to. I mean, I could go to g7, but this is really looking like a more of an equal game, and I want to promote the pawn. So what I do is I uncover it with um, bishop to e7 check. Um, so that the king can go ahead and take the pawn, and then there's another discover check with bishop to, bishop takes f6 check um, with the rook. Um, he could have actually taken the rook now with his knight, and then he could have won a piece. So maybe that was a little mistake on my behalf. So the rook's checking the king, he could have been knight takes f7, and after I take his rook, then he could have taken my bishop with his knight. Um, which, yeah, it probably was a mistake on my behalf, but he didn't see that. He played... Um, king down to e8, and then I take the bishop, sorry, I take the rook with my bishop, and he goes ahead and takes the, uh, takes the rook over there. Uh, and then I just bring the bishop back to c3, just because it's being attacked, uh, and I want to support, uh, these pawns coming up the board. And he plays king to d7, but, uh, after I play a4, king c7, a5, um, I run out of time, which is a shame, because, as you can see, I think I'm three pawns up in the position uh, but because I took so long to calculate some of those lines, uh, I really did not have the time to finish him off. Uh, but nonetheless, it was a good game. I'd rather lose on time than by checkmate. Um, and I've got more chances to get my rating up soon. Okay, so thanks so much for watching the video, everybody. I've been Nightfighter22. I wish you good luck playing chess, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye, everyone.